Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's me again. It's still Wednesday, April 29th, and it's now 9.07 p.m. And I just had a thought. To, I was singing and thought, well, I'll stop now and start praying. And I said, I answered all of my email, and I said, I better check, double check my comments. I wanted to make sure they were done. And I went under the place where comments from all the videos are, not just under the bell. Well, I found a couple, and I want to share one and then read the scriptures she was given and then some, because I like to read the above and below. You know how I am. All right, this is good. All right, she said, uh, she's talking about the comment is under the video. God will pay back everything the enemy has stolen. Let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And it will take us, take us to there so I can read the whole thing. All right. It's got the sign on it that says, John 10.10, 10, The thief cometh not, but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. Jesus Christ. And then there's a picture of a Bible. All right. So, the title was, God will pay back everything the enemy has stolen from a prophetic dream. I said, you kidding me? All right, and then I said, I forgot to share my thoughts with you, and now I don't remember what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, that was really dumb, but anyway, um, I shared the dream in there, and Aubrey said, her word is true. I got a similar word, and a prophet that I know, that I know is true, gave a message after the word I received, and it lined up. The years, the locusts ate up, the things the enemy has stolen will be given back double, sevenfold or more than that. About a month ago, I had another vision of a locust. I got famine from that. I also received a dream where a man could not, a man I could not see handed me a blue and white can of food and the, the words, the words on it were, we the people. And what I interpreted that as is human meat will be fed to the people. I'm thinking during tribulation, the flesh of the martyrs because of famine. I do not know what to think of this dream, so please take it to the Lord. Okay, then she says, she replied to herself, also, the Lord is coming for a bride without spot or wrinkle. He makes so clear, and I feel, chapter th uh, th uh, 3, verses 8-13, Colossians, was shown to me concerning this. Audrey, you're so right. People, uh, oh, here's another comment I missed. Ge Geneva Gardner, um, you say you've never left a message. Oh, well, thank you for finally writing a, a comment, sister. Oh, well, let me just reply to her real quick. Okay. 
Well, I'm so glad you wrote, Geneva. Okay, so now I went, then I went to Colossians chapter 3. Okay? And for uh, those of you wondering just exactly what is it going to take to get into the kingdom of heaven. Well, you listen up. This is, this is part of the instructions that we have been given. And if you haven't been into the Bible long, you may not have read this chapter yet. Okay, so I'm going to read it for you. Put on the new self, it says. Let me put up my legs here. All right. Let me check my position. All right, that looks good. All right, verse 1. Therefore, if you have been raised up with Christ, keep seeking the things above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. We don't want the wrath of God upon us. That means you'll be left behind when the wrath of God begins after the first rapture. In them you also once walked when you were living in them. Let me repeat that. Verse 6 begins, For it is because of these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. And then verse 7, And in them you also once walked when you were living in them. See? The once saved, always saved bunch. This is another verse. This is showing some Christians once walked right. Walked the right path of righteousness, following Christ, obeying his commands that he writes out here in the Bible through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the writer, whoever it is, Paul, Peter, Luke, John, whoever was do, doing the writing, it was Holy Spirit inspired. It's the words of God. Okay, going on, verse 8. But now you also put them all aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. We want to have the image of Christ. Sure, we mess up and we'll act out and get angry or say something that's not very Christ-like. Let's admit it. We've all done it. I even now and then something will slip out. I would oh forgive me Lord, I shouldn't have said that. That wasn't 
proper to say or that sure wasn't very nice to say I'm really sorry or sometimes it'll be a thought and I'll just say oh God please forgive me I shouldn't have even thought that because our actions begin in our heart the Lord says and out of the mouth comes the uh, how is it worded out of the mouth comes uh, what what you've been thinking okay let's see where was I okay so and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one which is capitalized that's Jesus who created him a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, now listen up, everybody who thinks we all have to keep the Sabbath and the holidays and every, every Jewish law in the Torah, listen up, a renewal in which there is no distinction between Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised barbarian Scythian that's got a capital S so that's someone from Scythe I guess slave and free man but Christ is all and in all alright we no longer have to circumcise our babies those laws were fulfilled when Jesus died on the cross. Moving on. So, those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience bearing with one another and forgiving each other whoever has a complaint against anyone just as the Lord forgave you so also should you beyond all these things put on love which is the perfect bond of unity. Now, this is where we all should be united. But beware of those teaching unity when it has to do with combining all the churches, including Muslims, Buddhists, etc., with the Catholic Church again. Okay? But, the Lord does want those of us he has saved out of all of those as his followers we should be united in love having compassion bearing with one another forgiving each other whoever has a complaint against anyone etc okay beyond all these things put on love which is the perfect bond of unity let the peace of and I bet you any money they use that scripture when they have those big old conferences with all those religious leaders and the Pope and whoever goes I bet you any money they they quote that scripture we have to have the perfect bond of unity. I can just hear it. Anyway, moving on. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another 
with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks through him to God the Father. And I'll end it there because the next part goes into family relations, wives, husbands, husbands, wives, children, be obedient, and so forth. But you see, this is how we're supposed to live. So if any of this pricked your conscience, then you take it to the Lord and ask him, how can I stop this or stop doing that or stop having these thoughts or whatever, you know, pricked your conscience. We must live holy and as perfect as possible asking forgiveness when we mess up. And that's how to stay holy. You clean your slate when at least once a day or when as soon as you know you messed up, that's what I do. Why put it off till that night? I mean, just why? If I catch myself gossiping with someone, I'll go, oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. That's gossip. And I'll say, I am so sorry, God. I Please forgive me for gossiping out loud right in front of them. Hey, it's a testimony of sorts. And that's not to brag or anything. That's just saying, I know when I mess up, I asked for forgiveness right then. And I just pray that that this, I'm thankful that Aubrey was led to chapter 3 of Colossians, that he led me to feel like I should read it, that it, will help you have just a reminder of how the Lord wants us to live. We all know these things, most everybody. Some of you might be newer Christians than others. And like I said, maybe you haven't read that book yet. So, see, every book is important. They all have instructions. Even if it, you pretty much got all that from... Corinthians, Romans, you see, they're like, he's, he's now he's teaching it to the Colossians, so you're getting a reminder of it, you see, and maybe he added something in here that he didn't say to the other churches. However, it was written, we know it's all Holy Spirit inspired, it is the Word of God, Paul's teachings are as important as the Gospels, okay? But I always recommend a Christian that just got saved or hasn't been in the Bible, they, when they get one, please start with the book of John because it's the book of love and then go back and get uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke and then go from Luke to Acts because Luke wrote the book of Acts. Not that that matters, but I'm. that's my suggestion. Some people want to go ahead and just start Matthew. That's fine. Okay. They're all the Gospels are full of the words of Jesus. And that's what a beginner needs to know, is what did Jesus say to do? All right. I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video over the internet connection, myself, my computer, and over each and every one of you and your devices, your uh, internet connections. Please remember to turn off your Wi-Fi's and your cell phones when you're through with them. They're not as important as you think. They're it makes me fear bringing in another animal. Well, uh, that's in God's hands now. I prayed about it. 
I applied for a couple, but I decided there's one, one, that if they will have me, I will take that dog, a little half chihuahua, half something else, and it has the biggest ears. It looks like it could flap them and fly. It is so stinking cute. And so if it's Father's will for me to have it, I'll get it. And if it isn't, that's fine. That's the end of my search. I'm leaving it up to Father, whether they accept me or not. And so I wanted to let you all know. So I still miss my buddy, but she will bring more joy until Jesus comes. And I know he will provide for us. Okay. With that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.